Well, welcome to the newest edition of Ask Antar, and thank you to our mayor, of course, for being here for another segment. Well, thank you for uh, hosting this, and, and I thank our residents for the questions that they provide. Um, so this is like our ninth episode. I know. We, you know, uh, there has to be some type of celebration. I think by the time we get to end, maybe we should have some confetti or something. We'll have something special. We'll do something special. Is this accomplishing what you wanted? Uh, yes, it is. Um, I, I look forward to the questions. Sometimes they're a little redundant, mm -hmm. uh, but I uh, look forward to more people joining us and asking things that they may not know. Mm -hmm. uh, and if there's a redundancy, then maybe that means that we need to emphasize it more. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, many of the things that people ask me when they walk around town, uh, you know, that may be a question that someone else has. So. Right. Uh, if you submit it, it it's uh, helpful to the process of informing residents of where their city is and what the challenges are and how we're addressing those challenges. Well, I want to thank everyone who sent in questions. Um, we certainly appreciate it. And the first one's not even going to come from this list. It's one that was actually on our Facebook page. And there was a lady who wanted to see what you thought about, uh, of, about compiling a list of um, buildings that need to be torn down um, to show who actually owns many of those buildings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, sometimes uh, having the most accurate and up-to-date list becomes difficult. Uh, we have compiled uh, lists like that in the past, mm -hmm. um, but some are demolished. You know, uh, unfortunately, some new buildings become abandoned and, and their condition deteriorates. Uh, but I'll say this, when I think of uh, Casa Grande, mm -hmm. Uh, when I think of all of the hotels on Ellis Avenue, uh, when I think of the uh, large building um, on Briarwood mm -hmm. uh, that was demolished, uh, while we have a lot to do, uh, I can tell you based on the history of the city and our inability to get to some of the larger buildings uh, historically because those larger buildings could essentially take up our entire demolition budget for a year. Uh, I want to commend our planning and development department uh, for looking at creative ways for how we take down these eyesores. Uh, in no way am I suggesting that, that uh, we've taken care of all of the eyesores or, or that we're satisfied, but I am seeing progress. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's the only way that we can measure success. Are we better than we were yesterday? And I can tell you definitively that we are definitely taking down more structures today uh, than when we started. Uh, I know that one of the structures that people want to see come down uh, is the Hotel O, mm -hmm. um, and that is going to happen. Uh, I, can, I can say to those that are listening with assurance that that, that is going to happen. We just want to make certain that the process by which we do that uh, is in compliance with the law uh, and that we don't do anything that violates anything that, that the city could be held accountable or anyone else for that matter. We just came out of budget season, um, and one thing you talked about planning and development. Um, in the next fiscal year, we can see a lot more code enforcement officers out there. Speak a little bit to that. Absolutely. Uh, well, we, we need to make certain that as we have uh, a large number of violations that people see, that residents communicate, uh, that we have enough code enforcement officers that, that one, can get to the places that they haven't been, and two, uh, the, the violations that they are reporting on that they have the actual time uh, to stay with that case mm -hmm. to ensure it to its completion. Uh, now, you know, there are still loopholes in the process. Uh, and so I'm not saying that that is in and of itself um, the magic pill, right, or a magic uh, bean, right? Uh, but it is a part of the process that I think will make things a little easier. Okay. All right, I'm going to go to the questions now. Um, Thalia Mara Hall. Mm. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask these two questions and then you can answer because um, they're from two different people. The first one says, did you intentionally shut down Thalia Mara Hall? <laughs> and secondly, what does the city do to help reopen this huge staple for our city, state, and international uh, crowd? Yeah. So, no, I did not. Uh, Thalia Mara Hall is older than me. Um, significantly older than me. Uh, it was built in the 1960s. Uh, and what comes with an aged building is aged infrastructure. Uh, challenges, many, many challenges. And so we are constantly investing in Thalia Mara Hall. Uh, ahead of the IBC, International Ballet Competition, we spent uh, 
nearly seventy thousand uh, dollars just in immediate repairs to Thalia Hall. Uh, we have gone to the state legislature in order to uh, request more funding to to deal with repairs and because we had a plan and we went and advocated for that we received it. Unfortunately the deterioration of Thalia Hall and some of the challenges within the facility uh, escalated a little quicker than than our plans to address it but that wasn't for lack of a plan uh, otherwise we wouldn't have the money available from the state legislature um, so just with age buildings uh, come challenges it's not a Jackson problem it's not a you know it's not because people aren't concerned it's not because people aren't looking at them every day you know you know what do you have it that sometimes age buildings have challenges and so uh, we're working towards that uh, so I think it's definitely a moment that, that, you know, while we certainly need to prioritize it and, and get to those repairs as soon as possible, we need to um, settle a little, settle down a little bit and, and understand that that is going to happen. And I want you to speak a little bit to the transparency because we're trying to make it clear. You know, it's something that people ask all the time about Thayamar, so we've kind of made it easy for them to get yeah. updates. Absolutely. And, and some of the challenges that are, are, have happened, in fact, I, I would dare to say nearly all of them outside of the air conditioning uh, unit itself, knowing that it needed to be replaced and, and having applied for state funding to do so, uh, many of those challenges were not were unbeknownst to my administration. Uh, we didn't know, um, and and so uh, having known those, uh, we reported them as soon as the the first available moment presented itself uh, over a weekend. Uh, An already, you know, aged air conditioning system uh, had yet another setback, mm -hmm. and that led to uh, increased condensation in the facility and then the growth happened. Uh, so it wasn't weeks, right. it wasn't, certainly wasn't months that, that we had delayed. In fact, it happened over the weekend. Mm -hmm. The next Monday was when discussions about uh, the growth had taken place and the need to have the proper um, expertise to come and, and, you know, determine what we were looking at and how we remediated it. Uh, other things like the rigging system are things that, that we have now learned uh, need to be addressed, but though, even those aren't without use uh, from what the engineers tell us. We just have to know the weight limits uh, until we can replace them. But there, the good news is that there's a vision for that. Um, I don't want to create a false expectation or, or you know, uh, improperly estimate the, the timing of those repairs, but I think it'll be sooner rather than later. I don't think we're looking at years, for instance, or a year of Thalia Mara Hall being closed uh, but we want to make certain that when you come, when you enjoy a performance at Thalia Hall, you can do so safely, uh, that those that are performing can do so safely. Uh, and so this is a, resp a, rep a, a responsibility that we have, and, and this is something that is necessary. Uh, just as a bridge goes out in Jackson, right? It's an inconvenience to everyone, right? right? Nobody wants to find an alternative route. Uh, but just imagine the danger. Just imagine how terrible a narrative it would be if we didn't shut down the bridge and harm took place. And so we're going to ensure that the work is done and done correctly and that people are able to enjoy Thalia Mar Hall again. I asked that question in that way so you could give the comms team our pat on the back for yeah. our button on the website. <laughs> That's where all that was I, going. I got you. And, and you, des you deserve it. <laughs> don't, hurt your, don't hurt your arm trying to pat yourself on the back. But, Not me, but Justin but, <laughs> and Kai, but yes, yes, yes. No, no, no. They, I, I think that um, understanding that not everyone takes you know, advantage of our press conferences. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes where we think we've communicated to several different, you know, vested parties, there may be someone we forget in the process. Right. I don't book the shows at Thalia Mara Hall. Right. I, I, you know, often attend and I'm grateful to be there. Uh, but I don't have a running tally of what is happening at Thalia Mara Hall today, tomorrow, even next week. Right. I have other things that I have to address. And so it was certainly no nefarious intent uh, that there, there wasn't a communication to certain right. groups. Uh, we, we attempted to do that, but I think that in the process you learn, right? And so uh, we don't, we never profess to be perfect, right? Uh, we say that we're, we're vested in, in a better process. And so uh, having learned that there were people that had not been communicated with, I thought it was a perfect solution. 
Um, so we're going to take a quick break, and we will have more with Ask Antar coming up in just a few moments. Welcome back. So let's see, where will we go now with our questions? Okay, this is from Joy. Okay. She says, my question, is there a plan for how streets are paved? Now she says you paved Sheffield in the past and Cully and East Northside Drive, Pine Ridge and Bellwood, all the streets surrounding Hillview, but you stopped uh, short of Hillview Drive to Sheffield, which is the worst in the area. Is mm -hmm. there a reason why that Hillview is being overlooked? Well, I, I will say that I am not um, firsthand, you know, familiar with Hillview and the condition. And, and I will uh, pledge that we will look at that and, and see about that street. But to speak to the, the, the larger question, is there a plan? Yes. So uh, it depends on the source of funding that paves that street. Uh, if it comes from the 1% sales tax, which those streets that are done by the city of Jackson, by and large, uh, they come from the 1% sales tax. Um, and so early on in the process, we were looking at streets that had the highest traffic count, major thoroughfares. Uh, and so that's why we paved those, depending on cost. You know, when people talk about streets, you know, one thing that I have to share with them, to be honest and, and you know, let them know, is that all streets aren't created equal. Uh, meaning, the condition of the street, the condition of the infrastructure under the street. Mm -hmm. uh, and so if we don't have the money to, to take on that street, uh, then sometimes we may, have we may have to deviate to another street where there is money to do so. Mm -hmm. Any street that is not done is, is essentially not done because the funding to do it at that particular moment in time is not present. We would pave all of the streets in Jackson if we had the resources to do it, but unfortunately that is not, uh, that is not where we find ourselves. So we have to make the decision, how do we have the, the greatest impact with the resources we, we have? So early on, it was the major thoroughfares because we wanted to impact as much of the quality of life for as many residents as possible. Um, and the county was doing neighborhood streets. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that there is some, some um, level or, or some proportion of streets that they are still doing. I don't know uh, the exact list of those streets. As I said, I, we sign um, interlocal agreements all the time, uh, but I don't know exactly what their, their uh, picture and which streets that they are doing. Uh, but the most recent streets that we are addressing actually come from the information provided from neighborhood associations. So we sent out communication uh, through our, our uh, constituent services division where we sent a questionnaire to neighborhood associations so that we not only look at it from an engineering standpoint, but we look at it from the perspective of people who live in the community. What streets do you prefer? Uh, and so if we pave those streets, then it came from information provided from the community. Uh, it didn't come from our own selection, our own bias towards uh, this street or that street. It came from a prioritized list of streets. And then there are other factors to be determined. As I talked about all streets not being created equal, uh, there are some streets that uh, we've learned that there is work that Jackson Water intends to uh, achieve and they plan on digging up the pipe soon and replacing things. Or there may be a lot of sewer failures under that particular road. And so what would be a waste of the public funds would be for us to pave a street only for someone like Jackson Water to come behind us, it dig it up mm -hmm. because there are repairs that need to be done. Uh, and so then we, we would have wasted the money um, and the impact would not have been felt. So there are a lot of factors that go into how, how a street is selected um, and the timing in which a street is done. Okay. 
JVN wants to know, what is the mayor doing to combat teen violence? And what are some activities that he can bring to the city so that teens have something to do on the weekend? Side note, I would love to be a part of the process. Well, first of all, I want to thank him for his willingness to be a part of the process, and we'll take him up on that. Uh, there are a number of things that we're doing. Uh, so uh, one of the things that we're most proud of is this Office of Violence Prevention and Trauma Recovery. So we get to the heart of what's happening within our community, uh, that we better understand uh, what is leading to young people not being able to deal with their temporary problems and seeking permanent solutions mm -hmm. to those things. Uh, we're starting a, uh, what I call, uh, the team always corrects me, but what I call a uh, curfew center. Uh, and that comes from this conversation that was taking place with our council about implementing a curfew. The problem that we have is twofold. One, uh, with curfews, our bark is louder than our bite, you know, or more pronounced than our bite. Mm -hmm. uh, because even as we engage young people who may be out past curfew, if that is the solution that we're choosing, there's no place to take them. Right. Uh, we have a detention center which is at its full capacity. Uh, in many instances, those uh, beds are being taken by young people who are being charged or being held for uh, crimes as if they were adults, mm -hmm. uh, murder and, and, violent, and yeah. violent crimes. Yeah. And so um, we have no ability to, to hold them there. And then the other issue with that is uh, we may be using the wrong tool to address the challenge that we have because not every child that's out past their curfew is actually committing a crime uh, and we want to better understand you know are you escaping a violent situation in your home or a challenge there and so with these curfew centers we are looking for a place that we can take young people uh, that we can have social workers present we can have extracurricular activities present we can have organized programs to better understand what we're dealing with uh, so that we get to those young people before the situation becomes violent uh, but we also are looking to do things with our Parks and Recreation Division mm -hmm. uh, so that there are more things that we can engage with them. I fundamentally believe uh, that it's a lot easier telling young people what to do than simply telling them what not to do. Yeah. Um, and so um, there's some creative things that we're trying to do. We're trying to rehab some parks uh, and the programming in the parks. Uh, and that's all a commitment to young people. And, and you know, I won't go ahead of the announcement. Uh, but there are some uh, some Jackson, former Jackson residents, uh, people uh, who have made a name for themselves that are looking to give back. Uh, and so they're a part of that process. Okay, that's pretty awesome. Okay. Um, I have a question about traffic lights. I feel like you can really quickly, in 30 seconds, direct them to our Facebook yes. page. Yes. Go uh -huh. to the City of Jackson's uh, website where we update uh, the traffic lights and, and where they are and the status of repair, whether it's being done in-house, whether it's being done contractually. There are many more, unfortunately, because we've had several storms. Uh, the storms knock out uh, those traffic lights. We've also had more vehicles to hit traffic lights. Mm -hmm. So when we give a list, it doesn't mean that, that we are ignorant of uh, the light that you may, you may be speaking of or frustrated with. It may be, unfortunately, uh, it's a it's a new uh, it's a new addition to the list, and right. so uh, I'm much more pleased with the rate in which they're addressing them. Uh, but we have a lot to do. Yeah, well, stick with us. We'll be right back in just a few moments. Welcome back. So these next few questions are going to come from Dre. I feel like Drake is pretty cool. Dre, okay. not Dre. Dre. Okay. okay. You know you would have said Drake. It would have been a whole, right, a whole, been a whole other thing. thing. Yeah. Um, but anyway, he says he really enjoys these segments and that he appreciates, appreciates you actually asking the questions. Mm -hmm. And um, he says you always have to deal with a whole bunch of bull. 
Mm, okay. And um, yeah, he wants the city to be better and to be great. He also wants you to drop your gamer tag so you can get a beating. Okay. I, I, well, you know, uh, I'm really, I'm really pretty cold on that NCAA <laughs> football. So, you know, it is, it is what it is. You know. Ah. <laughs> uh, okay. So he says, here's a couple questions. I, um, I don't want to lose a vote because I, you know, beat somebody down in a game. You oh know my what gosh. <laughs> Okay, he said, I saw something about Livingston Road housing where the old plant is. There was chatter about crime, but isn't it better and a blessing that investments are coming instead of leaving the dead area there? What are your thoughts? Yeah. Anytime you have an opportunity to restore dignity in your community, uh, then it, it goes to affect all of the ills, mm -hmm. all of the negative things that you see. Um, and so... Uh, we talk about the fact that we're losing population. One of the challenges we have as a city is that we don't have a, a sufficient stock of new housing. Mm -hmm. uh, people in Jackson are like people anywhere, right? Uh, now, some people may choose to live in older homes, uh, but people in Jackson want new development as well. Uh, and so, you know, just the notion that market rate housing is somehow going to lead to uh, crime and, and is going to be a blight on the community is absolutely absurd. Uh, we want people to invest in the, in the housing in Jackson. Now, do we have to make certain that we hold any developer accountable, that they do what they say they're going to do? Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Uh, but that's the onus is on us to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm, I'm grateful to have just signed uh, the plat for uh, the Livingston, uh, Livingston development. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's supposed to be in the neighborhood of 200, 200 mm -hmm. rooftops, mm -hmm. right? Uh, market rate housing uh, right next to the Jackson Medical Mall. Um, like $200,000 for, for each house, they're about? Somewhere in that, that mm -hmm. area, uh, but it's you know based on the market for new housing mm -hmm. in, in Jackson, and, and I'm sure it'll be a pristine, beautiful development. Um, and, you know, hopefully we see professionals that work, uh, that work in, you know, the medical, in the medical mall mm -hmm. that, that choose to live there. It's not far from other medical facilities, right. uh, the convenience of that. And so we have to start presenting new things so that more amenities come. Uh, when more amenities come, then you create a buffer and you are able to do further development within the communities. Now, I'll tell you, my goal is always... Uh, to make certain that as we're developing, uh, that we're not guilty of moving people away, instead lifting them up. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't want to move people from one state of misery to the next. And so there are protections that we have to look at and look at how we do this in a way that it fits within community, right? That it lifts community up, that it takes away the blight that's already there, that it, it takes advantage of, of creating more opportunities and, like I said, amenities for that community. Okay. He says, is there any hope for the zoo? We got to try to keep it open. Should we move it or something? What are your yeah. thoughts? I do think that there's hope for the zoo, uh, but it's, you know, it's not a, it's not an easy solution in that the zoo needs money, right? Uh, if we're talking about moving it, that would require a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And so my position has never been, hey, keep the zoo how it is, you know, don't invest in it. Uh, I'm not blind, nor do I not see, you know, where, you know, maybe some of the structures need repair or, or need to create uh, more exhibits. Mm -hmm. uh, what I am saying is, if the zoo is deserving of funding if we move it, then is it not deserving of funding where it is? Is that community not deserving of an investment, right? Uh, and so it's a very hard position and, and a hard narrative to sell to me or to the community to say, y'all just ain't deserving of the investment, right? right? Y'all are not deserving of this being here. And so the things that have been said, you know, people are afraid of that community. Uh, well, first off, uh, when there are events there, they're, they're certainly not afraid during those events, right? right? Uh, we see them, we see a packed zoo. Uh, so if I'm afraid of something, I'm afraid of it every day, right? right? Uh, you can't bring me a steak. Today, tomorrow, you can't put a bow on it. If it's a snake, I'm afraid of it, right? right? Um, and so I just believe that that community is deserving of investment. That doesn't mean that I, I have any disdain or any problem with any other community. I just see love in all of Jackson. And, and if we fail to invest there, uh, if more people move away from those communities, then what ultimately happens, whatever part of Jackson you live in, the tax burden will now be increased on you.
-hmm. If people leave from West Jackson, uh, if people leave from South Jackson, then people in North Jackson are going to have to pay more money uh, in order to maintain the infrastructure and all the things that we need in the city. Okay. Jerry's last question, anything with the Metro? Uh, nothing to report immediately. Okay. Um, I will share that, uh, one, we, we own the Dillard's building and, and that was even, uh, that may even be transferred to mm -hmm. someone uh, who has a vision for a production studio. Uh, and I hope that that comes into fruition. Uh, so that is a, a new vision for a portion of the Metro Center. Uh, I do believe that that the reality is that we may have to depart from, you know, our nostalgia and, and what we formerly knew the Metro Center as. Uh, one thing that, that I thought has been reasonably suggested, uh, but I don't have control of this, and, and I certainly defer uh, to the knowledge and information and, and position of the leadership of Jackson State. Uh, but I, I personally have thought that it, it was, an, you know, a site worth being looked at for a new Jackson State Stadium. Uh, it has highway access. Uh, bringing something like a stadium there will certainly lift up the entire community mm -hmm. and opportunities for investment. Uh, so, you know, I'm not saying that to be, you know, controversial or, or be opposed to what the leadership may think. I haven't had the conversation with the, the uh, new president. Right. Uh, I'm just saying that as looking at it from the city's perspective, mm -hmm. that it, it, it certainly can create an opportunity for other development in the area. All right. I was all, Dre was thumbs up, so I read like this last sentence. He says, um, Melissa, shout out to you. You're great on the news and seem like you're a, pre a pleasant person. But I saw on Facebook you're a Cowboys fan and the Saints cooked them well, really good. Well, Dre, you, you appear to be a very insightful individual. Dre, you're blocked. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, send more questions and, and feel free to say whatever you want about the Cowboys. <laughs> Uh, because they can't stop nobody. Right? I, I'm just seeing vision of Alvin Kamara's foot on someone's chest right now as I think about it. So you know and, what? I, I mean, it is what it is. You know. <laughs> hey, look at it this way: better draft pick. You know, that's that's the way. And then next year, it's our year. Or the year after that. It's our or year. Or the year after that will be your year. It's right? our year. <laughs> All right, so we have about one minute left. Um, what do you want to say to people to thank them for tuning in and maybe encourage more questions? We really appreciate the questions. These are some really good ones. Absolutely. Uh, I'm, I'm grateful for it. Uh, I'd ask for, you know, you to keep looking at things that you want to know about the city. Uh, I want to take an opportunity. I think that there's a narrative that some uh, try to push about everything going wrong in the city. Yes, we have challenges. And yes, we have forces that, that are intent on not being a partner with the city, uh, but we've had tremendous success. Uh, we've had historic funding to take place in the city. We've paved more miles of road than ever before in the city. Uh, even recent challenges like the strike with JTRAN, not only have we been able to come out of that, but if you look at where we're going with our public transit system, uh, we went from end of life buses that were breaking down every day uh, to virtually a new fleet uh, a new wayfinding system, uh, new bus shelters, GPS coordinates on our buses. Um, and so we're trying to turn the page. Uh, cha change is not always easy, uh, but what you find is that most people are not uh, afraid of change, they're afraid of loss. Uh, and so we need to make certain that everything we're doing is about the shared gain of each resident in Jackson. And that's what we're committed to, and we'll, we'll make certain that we include your voices in, in terms of how we get there. All right. Thank you, Marin. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure if you have any questions, make sure you head to our website. It is Jackson, www.jacksonms.gov. There is an Ask Antar tab. Just click that tab. You can also submit your questions via our social media pages. The Ask Antar Q thing is always up. Just post your questions there. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.